How's it going everyone? It's Sam. The market is falling down a bit today and we just got some kind of troubling news, um, economic news that I want to go over, talk about what's happening with the price action of Bitcoin and what is happening just in the overall markets. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification underneath the video as well so you can see future videos just like this hit the like button. And if you want to know what I'm buying and selling, you can check out the Patreon underneath the video. But we will be talking about something I bought here today a little bit later. Now, I will say I'm not in the normal setup here today at the cottage. So bear with me with the camera quality and that kind of stuff. But we'll make it through. Going to be here through the long weekend. Now, cryptocurrency falling a bit today, just down about 4% in the last 24 hours for Bitcoin. So we basically lost all the gains from the good news from the grayscale lawsuit so that we'll, we'll talk about that later but we we did get some economic data here today u.s unemployment rate jumped to 3.8 percent from 3.5 the forecast was 3.5 now the traditional markets are actually up a little bit here today on this news it's one of those weird situations where higher unemployment rate means that the fed is less likely to have to raise rates in the future so it's Unfortunately, it's a bad thing for the economy. It's a bad thing for a lot of people that lost their jobs. But in some investors' minds, it's actually a good thing because it means that the Fed's less likely to continue raising rates. Now, we'll have to continue to watch that. Obviously, things are starting to slip. We're starting to see unemployment rate go up. We have inflation coming down, but people are worried about recession. So the Fed may have already gone too far because there are some lag effects. So we'll have to continue to monitor that. We do have the next Fed meeting, I believe, later this month. So it will be interesting to see what they say exactly in terms of the unemployment rate and where they think we're actually going to have to go. A lot of people probably think, myself included, that they're going to continue to uh, talk very hawkishly. Uh, so that way that they they don't let people think that we're going to start lowering rates anytime soon and let inflation actually get worse because people think that they're going to be lowering rates and then people start spending and that kind of thing. Now, moving on to Bitcoin, we had the SEC delay six spot ETFs for another 45 days. We knew this was probably the most likely scenario. I said that a few days ago that we could have some big news later this week, but most likely not. And that's exactly what happened. They just delayed them. Now we have to wait until mid-October. I would expect them to delay even to the next time, the third deadline or final deadline even, uh, and probably for it to be approved right before the next Bitcoin halving, which I think honestly is good because it means that we have more time to buy and uh, accumulate before the next Bitcoin halving when the price will probably likely go up significantly. So I'm okay with it. Uh, Will Clemente says, in addition to BTC rejecting off of its 200-day and weekly moving averages on Tuesday, it also rejected off the short-term holder cost basis. Not a great look. Bulls want to keep, uh, want to see these levels reclaimed. So on a technical level, also not looking great. Now, I will say we are still above that $25,200 mark. So if we break that, obviously we could see a bit of a drop. I've gone through that in previous videos, but we could see a couple thousand dollar drop after that. Now, I am buying here today, so I, I bought some Bitcoin here today, not because I know that this is the bottom, but because I know in a few years we'll probably much, be much higher than we are today. So I think that's probably the best way to go about it. If you're bullish on Bitcoin, you never know what kind of news is going to come out, what the Fed's going to do. I think the Fed is probably a better gauge of what happens to Bitcoin's price and the money supply and that kind of thing than news. But I think it's probably good to dollar cost average instead of just trying to wait for that flip. Now, of course, some people uh, maybe want to do that and just try to time it out perfectly or just they're going to wait completely because they think we're going through a recession or something like that. I get that, but just know that there is higher risk then that you don't actually get in as heavy as you want into Bitcoin. So I'd rather buy a little bit along the way every couple weeks or something than having to buy all at one time and then possibly missing the next parabolic rally that we go on. Now, moving over to the traditional markets, Tesla has a lot of news today. Tesla has officially introduced the all-new Model 3, the car's first refresh in six years. I'm just going to go through a little bit of it here. Range has increased by 12%. Now, I have a Model 3 right now. I have the previous version. 12% range increase would be huge. Like, there are a lot of times where I'm just towards the bottom of my battery 
kind of a long trip or something, hour and a half, two hours away, and I come home on the same charge, it would be really nice. That 12% would be huge. Tesla has uh, changed 50% of the parts in the car. Tesla is also, also releasing two new colors. There's an ambient LED lighting in the interior. Kind of looks like a spaceship. Uh, this is similar to Lucid. I believe Lucid has that too, which looks really good. Brand new steering wheel. The center console has been redesigned as well. Tesla now uses real metal, which is nice. The metal now, or the fake metal, feels fine too. Tesla has achieved a 30% decrease in wind and ambient noise, 25% improvement in impact noise, and 20% improvement in road noise. Tesla has added acoustic glass to the rear windows. This would be nice too. I, I think this is one of my biggest gripes with the Tesla is that it is pretty loud on the inside. It, it's just very noisy from the wind. Tesla has upgraded the suspension by fitting new springs and dampers. They've changed the geometry of the front suspension. Um, and then the screen is much brighter and more responsive. The back seat has their own screen, which is really nice because right now there's they're just manual controls, I believe, to move the air around. And it would be nice for them to be able to put on their own heated seats instead of having to do it from the front console. Also, the front seats are ventilated. I think basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to make this very different from the lower cost Tesla that they're going to bring out here soon. And it makes sense. Right? You don't want a car that's just slightly lower range but has all the same features that's 20 grand less or 10 grand less than the Model 3 because then the Model 3 will never sell. This is just like a slightly more premium car now. It looks really nice with those LEDs there too. Um, and then it's 8% more efficient. So I think this is actually really good news for Tesla, uh, for the company. Some people are selling off the company. I think it's down 2% here today on some of this news. Now they did lower the cost of some of the inventory, but they don't have that many cars. So I, I wouldn't be worried about that. I think this is overall good for the company. I think it's good to set it apart from that cheaper, um, that che cheaper model, that $25,000 Tesla that will be coming out at some point. And they did have to uh, also increase the price of this too. So it's going to be 12% more expensive in China, 8% more expensive in Australia, 2.4% in Germany, 24 in France, which I think is fine. At least here in the US, the Model 3 is much cheaper than it was even a year ago. So I don't think this is a big deal for what you get for it. They also announced a cut to the full self-driving from 15000 to 12000 They could make more money from this. I mean, this is pretty much all margin. So if they get a much larger take rate, maybe they did some kind of test and determined that they would get 20 or 30%. Let's say they got 30% more people to buy self-driving if it was $12,000. Well, they decreased the price by 20%. So it would be an, uh, obviously more beneficial to cut the price a little bit. This is the first time I believe I remember them actually cutting the price, though, which, is, which is interesting. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, just keep a level head out there. Could be some volatility. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.